Welcome, everyone. We thank you so much for being here and taking the time out to join. And really, when you're here, just to be truly present in the moment, knowing that the truth will set you free, understanding that your heart has the vibration and it speaks for itself. It also shines a light. Something within every single cell in your body, like every cell is a sun. How you feel about yourself, how you let go of what has happened throughout the day and also throughout your life, whether you're holding on to something. So there is something that is of a gift within every single person. Your true essence that shines is your heart that beats. So sometimes in life there are situations where you experience many different things. Experience love. Experience anger and experience pain. Sometimes we think that these external sources are the meaning for why we feel the way we do. Sometimes the light is dimmed from what we think others do based upon a situation. But really you have to understand the power within yourself as you know, the will. Where there is a will, there is a way. Also, what is it in your life that dims your own light? And how do you bring that up in order to achieve what you want to do at the end of the day? you got to live. So, welcome everyone. And much light. There's so many things going on in life. It's so confusing to a lot of people. It's because your program we have this word called religion, but in the midst of all that, there's been war. There's been people dying over religion. And at one point in time, you have to look at yourself and say to yourself, okay, I'm myself, but are you really yourself? Are you going to contradict and talk about this and talk about that and argue about this and this is the way and this is but your life isn't right? How can you even make that statement arguing? There, there's no argument. There's nothing to argue over. It's all nonsense. That's why we have war sometimes. So, day was day and night was night and it was all good. But, what does that mean? How many of you embedded yourself with a bunch of nonsense because you heard something? Or my family says this, my religion does this, but my family does it this way, and we're the only right ones. Is that really realistic? So when you look at things, why are you judging? Why? It doesn't matter really what anybody else says about you. What do you say about yourself? If you're misunderstood, then you're misunderstood. Stop saying you're misunderstood. Come to this part of light inside you as 
even when you go to the doctor, is it the medicine or is it something of the medicine, the belief, the part of you changing, restructuring? Is the doctor's care very well? Shedding light. Learning light. To everybody else, you got to understand, words are words. And most of you are totally confused with words because everybody has a different meaning to the word, but you need law behind it. You need to look at your statements in life. Money doesn't grow on trees. It's kind of odd. Can't afford that. Got to save up for this. Got to work so many hours. Got to do that. Who told you that? Where's the programming? How were you raised? Why are you having the trouble you have? Because you're not seeing the light. You have to live. You have to strive to live. Breathing. Your breath is everything. You could change the world in a breath inside of you. We got a very important topic. That's the shame's about to talk about that's very live. And um, you will start to see that. I want you to be like a little child listening to a story or watching a movie that you love. And I want you to listen to Master Shane as if you received for the first time in your life tonight. You can be anything you want. You can practice whatever you want, religion, affirmations a day of life away. But what is that essence that shines? Master Shane, we welcome you, and we thank you so much for the opportunity to share. You're on. Thank You're you. on, Master Shane. Thank you, thank you. I'm very thankful and appreciative of everything that has been done and that has ever been done. Today is a new day, and it's beautiful to be alive. So if you're breathing, say to yourself, I am breathing. Acknowledge your breath. Are you breathing? I am breathing. If you're breathing, are you alive? I am alive. I am alive. I am alive. So... There's something inside, and we can call it this, we can call it that, but a word is a word, and a word can cover things up, or it can point to something, but it's only a pointer. So there is a light, the light as the source of life is with inside yourself. There is no need to look outside of yourself as you are sustained and provided for within from source. I am provided for by the universe. I am one with the universe. I am sustained from within side myself always and forever. This sounds nice. It makes life seem easy. Maybe it is. 
the journey is, is getting to that point inside of you where there is no doubt. Though sometimes this may bring up certain emotions that if held on could cause us to fight that within us. What do we see and what is the spiritual meaning of that inside of ourselves? The sun is always shining even though the human may not see it. Clouds can form and cover up that light, though shine, it does. Is it really hidden, or is it just hidden from the human eye? What if we have another sight than what we think as a human, that when rooted in, we will always know and see that light inside of ourselves? People may think that the sun, light, source of life, is outside of themselves if caught in illusions and therefore will experience that as that, though the true reality always remains and dwells within. When there are a lot of discussions and talks filled with opinions, judgments, and emotions, clouds can Born within, if consumed. And so I'd like to make a disclaimer as well, too, that uh, tonight's discussion talk contains what some may think as vulgar language. So if you are sensitive, um, this may not be for you. These clouds can cover up that knowing and trust in that source within these clouds can cause inner storms and distress. When you really look at the world and its current state, you can see that a lot of it is from the covering of that trust and knowing within. This is what it means to be blind in life, to not see where someone is going in life, to not trust that inside oneself. It is habit for us to know how to get to the gas station or store. It's easy for us now because we've done it so much to know how to navigate through the so-called physical world, but is the world really physical? Are we stumbling towards our heart's desire in life? We can have so many courses on how to do something, though. How do you really do anything in life? How do you find what truly matters? What truly matters to you? Life wants us to have what we want in life. And it seems that the healing journey is finding our way without harm. Many may seem successful, happy, prosperous, and even at peace. What is inside is the only thing of no thing that truly matters. So that is truly their business. And our business is to take care of our own mind-body temple. That is why I say we are all on our own healing journey of owning, quote-unquote, owning what goes on inside of ourselves. The truth is that there is deception and manipulation in the world. So our business is to make sure there is only peace and love inside of ourselves. The world may be toxic, but we don't have to be. And as we stay true to that within, the world will change according to that within. What is the emotion inside? Emotions can cloud up the trust of that source within. And emotions can, tra can be transferred like all energy. Sometimes we play a game called hot potato with our emotions. <laughs> when one knows not how to face and transform their emotions, they try to get rid of it any way they can, like throwing it on another. <laughs> or maybe there's a personal agenda against someone else, in which case they are only fighting themselves. And it's only a matter of time before it comes back to them. And when these emotions are very negative, they are like shit. And so, people can throw energetic shit on each other without knowing and wonder why they feel like shit. 
Yeah, I said shit. Why do we consider the word shit vulgar, when in reality it's very clear and to the point? What is so offensive about it, or are we just too sensitive? Oh my, don't say shit. Then we might realize the world is full of shit. Nonsense. Trivial and unusual, boastful, or inaccurate talk. Unfair behavior or treatment. Something of little value or worth. Unpleasant experience or treatment. Or how about to tease and deceive? Then you might look within. Oh no, don't do that. You will find the answer. How do we take care of our trash and shit? Do we recycle it in the circle of life? Or do we throw it all around our environment? Is this world just having one big shit fight? Kind of like a food fight, but with shit? In prison, they literally will shit on another and then roll on them like a steamroller in disrespect. They call it a Cleveland steamer. Or how about the Boston steamer, when a so-called lover shits on their apparent lover and rocks back and forth like a steamroller? How do we get our way? How do we communicate and influence others? Do we get mad in hopes that they will do what we want? Do we get sad so that they feel bad for us? Do we get angry so that they move as we wish? Do we look for dirt so that we can threaten another at one point in time to get our way or make another look bad so that we can apparently look good? Or do we try to shit on another because we feel bad and we want others to feel bad so that we can justify our badness? Many seem to be getting their way and how they get their way is their business. We all have to rest our head at night. The question is, can we rest our head in peace at night? How can we? So, what drives you? What are you doing and why? Are you doing something because you are mad at someone? Are you doing something because you feel someone is mad at you or will be if you do not do what they ask? Are you doing something because you feel bad or sad? Are you doing something because you have a lot of shit on you from others, maybe you should go take a shower and wash yourself off of that. Maybe it's time for a good bath with some Epsom salt. When you feel good, what do you do? When you're energetic and feeling alive, what do you do with all of that energy and power? Do you go look for trouble and try to mess with other people? Or do you look inside yourself, step into creator mode, and give the world everything you have? We are here to change the world. How we change the world is up to us, depending upon how we change ourselves inside. Looking outside, one will feel lost and confused as they are dependent on others for approval and trust. And when codependency lasts for too long, it creates toxicity. Looking outside, one may try to make the outside look nice and clean, while the inside could be a total disaster. And the only way they can justify that is by focusing on others and how seemingly they're doing worse. So, this world has a lot of nice homes, clean yards, and seemingly happy families, but everything is not what it seems. They could very well be wolves in sheep clothing. If they act nice, yet 
wish harm upon others inside? Who is the one that says, keep your friends close and your enemies closer? I have no enemies, and so-called friends is an illusion. We are all one family. When you start changing your life for the better, and you see other people trying to make their life look cleaner or better than yours, it very well may be a sign that they have been looking at you the wrong way and judging you. It's not to judge them back. They were trying to put you down. And if you look down, you're going to go down. But if you look up, you're going to look up. So if you want to get up, don't look down upon anyone. They're looking outside themselves and moving according to the so-called world. They are stuck in illusions. They are trying to make you feel bad and stop you from moving forward in life because they are stuck and unwilling to get stuck. But the good news is, is that you do not have to worry about them. In fact, you do not have to worry at all. That is not your job. Your job is to breathe and to be, to release and to be free. Looking inside yourself and digging for what may be hidden in you gives you the freedom to be free of others. It gives you the opportunity to find treasures, to find and to develop and hone your gift, to take your place in the world and be invited to tables, be invited to places, to speak to people, to touch and to share your love to the world, to be that sign of hope, that sign of compassion, that sign of love. to move in your own accord within yourself, to be your true and highest self, who could you become if you cared not what others thought, if you only focused on what you wanted to believe, if you focused on your ideal life, not only for yourself, but for others as well too, in wishing them well, in seeing them doing well, in that this does not have to be a win-lose situation. To get out of competition and comparing yourself with other people who seem to be outside of you in this house of mirrors, because this is a house of mirrors, and we are all reflecting back to each other. So what you see me as does not necessarily mean that is who I am. It is who you see me as. So why do you see me as that? But if you're saying that I am that, when that is how you see me, is that the truth? What if you're not seeing me fully? Then you could be making assumptions, which the world seems to make a lot of assumptions. And that can be a very dangerous path. I know this because I have sinned. I have looked at others the wrong way and I can see now. I can see the harm that I have caused and I seek to do my best in this moment. Maybe there is a way to change the past, though the point of power is in the present, so as we change in the present, we change the so-called past. How can we learn from our so-called mistakes and sin and use that as fuel to move us forward now? To love ourselves and our world as ourselves. This is what one 
may be afraid of facing themselves. There has been a lot of put-down and shame for all sorts of acts in life, but acts they are. And the point of power is in the present. So the more that one can face and embrace so-called mistakes and sin without judgment, without putting themselves down, because that's what has been going on for so long, one can cleanse themselves and live a holy life because life is holy. Life is a miracle. And so are you. But along the way, we have come to believe through the thoughts of others that we are not, that we're a mistake, that there's no purpose, there's no meaning in life. But this is the most dangerous belief of them all, not to put that belief down, but in the terms of limitation. Because what are you going to do with your day if you think there's no purpose in life? If you don't think that you're here for a reason, then what what are you going to do? How how are you going to justify your life? And that's human reasoning, is that we can do anything we want. The part is, what type of reasoning do we make up inside of our heads, inside of our minds? Like, what's okay and what's not okay for us? Um, And that's only according to our own selves inside of us and how we feel happy to live because do not we truly wish everybody to to be happy? Do we not wish to be happy inside? The question is, how do we truly be happy? And this is an interesting thing because this has been what has really propelled me in my search uh, for answers, for understanding, is that growing up, I felt like there had to be more. Um, it, It didn't satisfy me. It didn't fulfill me. And it's not to put down or judge in any way. It's just that the way taught and whatnot is, is that we, have, we, we make things in that the value, our joy, and our happiness comes from things. Right? We have certain holidays like Christmas and whatnot, birthdays, where we exchange gifts and we give each other gifts. And it's a great time. And it's, a, it's, it's sharing love and, and coming together and it, it does a lot of good and, and feeling good, that, that's good. Um, but what happens when we look too much outside of ourselves and we think that we can buy each other's love through gifting things. And then what happens when there's like social pressure to have to give others gifts when like you truly don't feel it inside of yourself. So for me growing up, like it's nice. My earthly parents have provided for me and and given me everything that I needed. Um, You know, I've never went a day without having food. I've always had a shelter and a, and everything, but I was thirsty for more. It just felt like there had to be more because I felt confused inside. I felt lost inside. Like, that's cool, like, great, I got a video game console. Awesome, I can play video games. But, like, what am I going to do with my life? Like, how, how is that? really helping me understand what I want to do with my life or like who am I and even how to discover my way in life. And so it can be a, an interesting thing where one can get lost looking outside and, and thinking that The outside is real. Though, 
I always ask of what is the nature of reality? Because one needs to understand the true nature of reality before coming to conclusions. Because if they're off base, then it could be an assumption and they could be living a lie. That's why, um, you know, we, we have religion, we have the word religion, and we have different things. And what are these things? These are organizations that are here to teach love. And we're not here to say that they're not teaching love. Um, there is a part where, depending upon how much fear is in that person, um, judgment in that person as well, too, it, you know, how pure is that? Um, that's something that we only know through our own experience and that why it's so important to be able to find that inside yourself because that is your compass in life. That is how you will know. That is how you will be guided. That is how you will see the wolves in sheep's clothing. You will be able to decipher inside yourself, who are the ones who actually truly believe in you, who actually truly support you inside of them, and the people who are just acting nice, but yet they're just sucking your energy and they're wasting your time. There is a part where if your arm is bringing you too much down, then maybe it's time to cut it off. You know, we, we have that with um, a lot of different things. So um, we have to be careful with the, the toxicity. And, and it's just the part of life and understanding that appearances are appearances, that we are all on our own healing journey. So it's like you look outside and you think that there's this world and there's only this one world. When we even know with science that is not true. In quantum phys physics, we know that there, there are parallel realities. Like anything that does exist, exists. It, it's just a matter of what dimension and what reality in which it is in. So when you're seeing something, it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that is what it is and that's how it is. It, it's an appearance of how it appears to you. So if you don't understand that, then you could very well be lost in the appearances of things. You have lost yourself in the appearance of others, which is really an appearance of you. And so how do you find your way out of that and to root yourself into that? So... Religion teaches love and everything, which is good. And it's always digging inside of yourself, undercovering, like, what's the spiritual meaning of that? And what is that all based upon? What is the commonality of everything? And when you really look at it, it they're based upon spiritual laws. That there are certain laws, and that's one of the powerful things that is taught, is that there are spiritual laws. and if you work with those laws, well, you know, you, <laughs> you can um, work with life and you can find your way and you can get what you want without causing harm to yourself, to your world, because your world is just a reflection of yourself. So if you're hurting your world, are you just hurting inside and don't know it? By knowing nature, we can know ourselves. So understanding that when you start to go and journey inside yourself, it's very empowering because then you learn on how to properly navigate yourself through space-time instead, in, instead of having to depend upon what maps of what other people think when in reality we all have our own subjective reality. So somebody's map may not be the same map for you. And what about the map to your dreams? 
How, how do we map that? And not just a physical thing of like, I got to do this, 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 that. That's what the world does. And that's why they're stuck in time and space. But what if there's a way to transcend that? What if there's a way to change the programming? Who, who, who taught you that? What, what if you could change your belief and you could change your reality through that? Instead, in, instead of having to struggle or take a long path, because the struggle is real only if you're struggling inside. So the more that you can cleanse yourself of the non-judgment, of the things that we've been hiding from, the things that we've been running away from, and it may seem daunting, but when you understand that it's inside of you and that once you get it out, <laughs> you can just laugh about it and just feel so much better and that you just have to breathe through it first and foremost. That's, that's the main practice and really going inside of your breath and going inside of your breathing and being one with your breath because then you're not caught up in the monkey mind and just energizing any thought because whose thought is that? Do you want that thought to be a part of your reality? If not, then don't breathe life into it. Breathe life into your own thoughts. And so... I suggest people take notes. I suggest people get journals and write in them every single day for themselves to really get inside of them and to start programming themselves how they choose to be in life because you can choose to be anybody in life. But the question is, how do we break free from all of the social pressure of what other people may think of us if we do this, if we do that. Oh, no. How much is that just BS? Like, just break the shackles and, and just let go. Start to build a vision for yourself. And it begins by understanding that things are possible. So is it possible that there is a light inside of you? Is it possible that there is a solution inside of you? Is it possible that you are provided for and you need not worry? All you have to do is let go to release to the universe, to trust inside of yourself instead of having to trust inside of others. Trust in yourself, you will know who to trust and who not to trust. But if you don't trust yourself, well, then you're going to try to cover that up in a multitude of different ways. You're going to be deceptive and manipulative if you're not willing to face that. And that's why people are deceptive and that's why they're manipulative. It doesn't mean that they're bad or they're horrible people at all. No, all is one. Everybody is a miracle. Everybody is a blessing. It's just that we all have a different choice in life and we're all on our own healing journey. So there's many things to learn. There, there's, and, and to learn through every single experience and why wouldn't we experience everything that life has to offer? And that's the beauty of it is that when you really experience those types of things, then your perspective and, and you start to hone in what you really want in life. You start to draw the line and not invite that in your life anymore. You start to write your own script in life. And this is just a part of the healing journey because when we were born we were at the mercy of others. And they did the best that they did of what they knew at that time. So for us to condemn that 
would only be to condemn ourselves. So it's on us if, you know, we, we want to be that, to receive that ourselves, is to show mercy to others, is to show forgiveness for others. And a lot of times, are we basing judgments off of assumptions? You know, how many times do we say, oh, this person did this, or that person does that? Well, how do you know? How, how do you know that was that person's motive? How do you know that person was out to get you? You know, maybe, maybe they were. So how do you overcome that and program yourself so you don't take that on and so you don't consume that? That's what happens when you root yourself inside of you. You start to become desensitized to the outside world. So you don't get irritated as easily. You know, that's what I'm starting to understand with the, the shamanic drums and everything, why they do it so loud. It's like they're trying to get everything outside of you that bothers you. So you get to that point where you're at peace because when somebody's at peace, nothing bothers them. And how, how, how often do people, how do we say that? I don't mean to bother you. Oh, you know, bug you and, and all that stuff. That, that's, those, that's interesting talk. And, and look into that in a spiritual context and an energetic context and what that may point to on a higher dimension that's not physical that this world comes from, that it's manifested from. So, breathing, giving thanks, allowing life to live, allowing others to live as they choose, not getting entangled with other people's affairs in other people's business because what you're really doing is taking away from you. You're taking away from your focus to work on what you're here to do. You're taking away from you living your dreams, from you fulfilling your purpose. And when that happens and you don't do anything about it and you just let it pass by, Maybe that's why people get haunted later in life. What if it's their dreams that come out as demons because it was their dream, but they didn't do anything with it. They just spent their life complaining about other people. They just spent their life going by and doing what everybody else does. That's fine. That's their choice. I'm just expressing the burden of what happens with that? You know, like Gary V makes a great suggestion to people in that he suggests that people go and volunteer at retirement homes because it will seriously wake you the f up. When you start seeing and looking in the eyes of people who have so much regret in what they thought they could have or should have or what they fell inside to do in life, and now they have to live with that burden that they didn't do anything with it, that's heavy. That's, that's heavier than making the sacrifice today. As they say, you can pay now or you can pay later. But paying later is going to be more expensive. And really, this is the only moment that exists. This is the point of power. So what you do now is how you propel yourself through time and space. So that's what I'm using right now. That's what really, really fuels me. It's not anger. It's not jealousy. It's not me trying to compare myself with other people. It comes from my knowing and it comes from my thankfulness of this opportunity that I have. It comes from my experiences of death. And you know what? It could have been over. could have been over. I could have been done with this reality. But I'm not. 
I have a will to live here. I have a purpose here. I'm not done here. There's still something more inside of me that I have to pour outside of this world. And so that's what I am doing. That's what I go back to and, and what fuels me. It's not to compare myself with others. It's not to impress others. It's to love others. It's, it's to share something that I've discovered through my many years of searching and digging inside of myself to be able to be an inspiration for others to pick up their own shovel and not to go and try to find dirt on other people, but to understand that the treasure is inside of them. So if they're wasting their time trying to bury other people, they're missing out on finding the treasures, the diamonds and the gold inside of them. Acres of diamonds. You can go out in the world all you want, searching for gold, treasure, all of that valuable stuff. But there's only one place you really need to look that you will find it. A lot of times it may be the last place that we look, but it's within that you will find the treasures and the gifts that you're here to share with the world. We all want to share. We all want love. We have this, like, this desire for connection, but like, what's holding us back? And are we being held back? And like, what are we sharing? Are we sharing shit? Or are we sharing the fruits of the Spirit in which we work for and towards inside of ourselves? Are we coming to a deeper level of peace and understanding inside of ourselves? Because as we do that, whew, that's some beautiful consciousness to share. To be able to help others find their own way in life, that is a blessing. And that takes great sacrifice as well, too, to be able to let go of trying to control people, let go of trying to think you know what's best for other people. And this is something that's very deeply rooted. Um, it's something that serves a purpose. So it's not to say that it's bad. Um, you know, we have the whole parent-child relationship and there's a part of being a guardian as a part of taking care and taking responsibility for someone. It's the part of letting go that we haven't really been taught. And so... Letting go of something like that is a great sacrifice. It takes one to muster up a lot of courage inside of themselves to be able to release and to let go of that because it feels good. It feels good to tell other people what to do, right? Like, you know, it feels good. Like, you should do that. You should do that. You need to be doing this. You need to be doing that. Like, whoa, okay. Feels good to be a drill sergeant, right? <laughs> You can get high off of that. <laughs> but what is that really doing? You know, I mean, it has its place. It can be beneficial. Uh, but what is that really doing? That's why I ask a lot of questions because that's what's helped and allowed me to think for myself and to find myself. I'm not here to tell other people what to do or to tell them how to live their life. That, that's their choice. That's their gift that they've been given. And it's their choice how they use that gift. My gift is my life. So my focus and my attention needs to be placed upon my life and what I do with my life. And if one doesn't know what they want to do with their life, well, guess what they do with their life? They go mess with other people's life until they're willing to look inside themselves and figure out, okay, like, what do I want to do with my life? What makes me happy? Like, what's my creativity in the world? What do I, you know, and it doesn't necessarily mean know that. It's just go try different things. Go do different things. 
Go in nature. Get away from people that you're always around. Stop listening to what everybody else thinks and, and wants you to do. And, and just do something different. Do something new. Get out of the habit. Get out of the programming. That's, that's the first part of it is, is just get out of the programming. And that helps you get a perspective of that programming, of how much it actually had an effect upon you and working and then being able to start to think in a different way and create a new programming to start to build that magnificent obsession. That's what it takes. That's the solution is that you have to become obsessed about the solution. That's how you're going to rid the old programming out of your mind is just Obviously, you have to let it go, but it's also as well, too, is you have to, what's the new programming? What's the solution? Okay, you don't feel understood. Well, if you understand, it doesn't matter if you're understood by other people. What matters is that you understand inside of yourself. What others believe, what others people think, that's their responsibility. That's, that's them. And so we're just so entangled and we're so caught up with everybody else and all this stuff that there's just massive entanglement. So how does one get out of all of this entanglement of all this social pressure and, and, and uh, opinions and, and ways people think when the reality is, is the truth is the truth. The truth doesn't change because of people's emotions. The truth does not change because of the seasons. The truth does not change because of how somebody feels. The truth is the truth, and the truth will always remain the truth. People can say whatever they want to say, but is it the truth? People can feel whatever they want to feel, but is it the truth? So concern yourself not with apparent worldly matters, but discovering that truth inside of you, breaking down all of the assumptions upon which you have based your life upon that could be a faulty foundation. Because if you do not, then a wind could very well come through and knock that house of cards down. Build your house off of a solid foundation and you will know a solid foundation to which to build your house by trusting and knowing that light inside of yourself. I am provided for. I am sustained from within. It's not my concern of how it will happen. My business is asking. Ask and you shall receive. But what are you asking? So what does that mean? What is asking? Usually asking is in the form of a question, right? And that's how we open our minds. That's how we dig inside of ourselves. That's how we start to think for ourselves and allow the clouds to vanish and the sun to shine on through. So, breathe and just breathe. And just allow yourself to be. Know what's inside of you. That it is okay. That you have the power to change. You have the power to breathe through it. It may feel intense at times. It may feel like you can't sit still or that you want to run away or that, you know, very uncomfortable or, or whatever, but understanding that you are where you need to be inside yourself. You are always home inside of yourself. And to be at home inside of yourself is a great blessing. It's a beautiful blessing. I mean, what, 
how would you operate if you were just completely at peace and and okay with yourself and wherever you may be? That it doesn't matter if you're in the big mansion of Beverly Hills or you're in the slums. Like, you're at peace. Like, appearances are appearances. Like, they're going to change. Like, it, it doesn't matter. Like, you're not going to take that house with you after you're dead anyway or after you've gone. I mean, you don't necessarily have to die. Death is just an experience. You know, who says, we, you know, die and go to heaven? Like, how do you know? <laughs> like, how do you know? <laughs> I, I thought the heaven was filled with living people, you know? So, <laughs> so live. <laughs> And live, you are, living inside of yourself, allowing all of the desires and the attachments to just fade away, understanding that you do not have to engage with them anymore. You don't have to eat what you've been eating your whole life. You don't have to live the way you've been living your whole life, that you can change. And it starts by changing your thought. It starts by changing your emotion. It starts by changing your routine and what you do, how you see yourself. Change everything and start implementing that and immersing yourself in that new water to get in that new sea. Leave the lake and jump in the sea. It's time for the ocean, the cosmic oceans. So, how does one get there? How does one get to that cosmic ocean of heaven where all is one and there is no separation, there is no division, there is no hatred, there is no anger? It's a different frequency. It's a different experience. Just like everything is a different experience. How would that feel? Put yourself in that. Understand that you have imagination, that you can see things as you wish to see them. They may not appear that way, but if you stay true to your faith inside of yourself, they will come to pass because that which is inside of your heart is the only thing that is real. It's the only thing that is true. Everything else is just an appearance of that. And when your heart is clouded, when your heart is dirty, then your world may be an illusion and it may be a little bit more difficult to see your way. So sometimes you have to just sit and breathe through it to build your meditation practice. You may want to get up. You may want to look at the clock. You may want to not do it. But that doesn't matter if you truly want to change, if you truly want to stop walking around with all of the heavy emotions that are limiting you from truly living here now to be able to understand how good and how light you will feel that you do feel that you just don't realize maybe. I don't know. How do you feel? That's only you. I'm just sharing my experience and my transformation of how I used to feel and how I now feel and that life used to seem like a big, big roller coaster. Oh, boy. Boy, was it a roller coaster. Sometimes it was fun. Sometimes not so much. But now, with understanding, with a deeper anchor inside of myself, I'm not as sensitive to the seasons and to the changes inside of the world because there are cycles, there are seasons, there's changes all of the time. So don't get caught up in the changes. Seek that which is real. Seek that which is you. I love you beyond the physical. 
I thank you for listening and for giving me this opportunity to share what's in my heart and to be able to speak love and to help because I seek to be one of value. I seek to be one to help others think for themselves, to understand, to see things so that they can live beautifully, so that they can live in peace because that's what I seek. I seek peace and I think that's a beautiful thing. It's worthwhile and I think it's the most important thing because once somebody is truly at peace, whew, be still and know that I am. You can move mountains. So give yourself that opportunity to sit and to allow the muddy waters to clear themselves so that you can see a clear reflection of yourself through nature and to be able to navigate yourself through space and time. Thank you very much. Many blessings. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much, Master Shane, for speaking. There was a little technical difficulty for a second. So, you're on the 10K yoke. So now, when you come to this word called the master, well, that's the name. And the name is just the name. So what makes us different than anybody? So let's look up the word spiritual. Can you, we're looking it up right now on the internet. We're using the internet and technology, searching it on Google. So we typed in the meaning of spiritual into the search engine. So it shows that, it is an adjective relating to or affecting the human spirit or soul as opposed to material or physical things. That is very emotional. You don't see that. That's emotional. The second meaning, relating to religion or religious belief. Now... Religion or religious belief. So now let's take another word. If any of you are listening, you will learn. If you're a spiritual teacher, you'll have another approach. Let's go to a next word, sin. So we have the meaning of sin here. A noun. An immoral act considered to be a transgression against divine law. Now look at that sentence. So if someone comes to you and tells you you're a sinner, according to who? Them? Was it their mom and pop that taught them one religion and the only religion? How's their life? And why do you care what someone's telling you you are. And the divine law they're talking, just because they say, doesn't mean anything. There is also an act. Because you have to make decisions in life, obviously, and you have to direct your life the way you want. So you can also commit a sin as a verb. Offend against God, a person, or a principle. Now, when you get into that and you're talking to this word human being, homo sapien sapien, and you're talking to them, well, what's their meaning of God? 
Where does it stem from? What's the culture? Where is it going? Why are they using this against me that they're better? You're not looking to judge. You're just looking at the actions of a person. So religious beliefs, there's so many religions in the world. So you would say, well, then it's okay they believe that. As long as it's done in good intention, there's no harm, and they're wishing well, many blessings to them. But now if you're running around judging with your eyes, talking about this, talking about you're the only one that does this, this, that, the other thing, you're committing a sin. The one that they put on the internet to confuse you. Divine law also, according to religious belief? Well, according to what religion? Who's the one that said that that's right? We have fact. We have different things, but... What's the real truth to divine law? It's a consciousness. If you sit long enough, all of you can receive it. Doesn't matter how educated you are. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter what you're wearing. Doesn't matter if you have a job or not have a job. The consciousness can be reached. So when you come to us, we look at things on a different level. Just because you say it, that means nothing. And this is for Filipiano. Okay, I hope I pronounced that right. Filipiano? In New York. Here we go. Filipiano says, I have such an issue. Everybody judges me. And I have a good practice, but I'm always in trauma, like the ER in spiritual. How do I get out of this? And what is a good thing to do? Well, let's fix it. What is the meaning of your spiritual you take a breath in? That's your meaning. That does not mean it's right. doesn't mean someone's judging you. Go beyond that and strengthen yourself that way. Now, take that back. Anybody that's listening to this call, the minute you hear this, you strengthen whether you know it or not. What is the person telling you their religious belief? Are they in the same field you're in, are they jealous, what are they trying to act like, are they fake or are you fake? Ask yourself the question. Now take a breath in. Don't fake. It doesn't matter what anybody else says, strengthen. My God, ain't it supposed to be yours too? You know, when it comes to spirituality, a lot of people are scared to talk to someone because they're in this religious belief. There's 5,000 people behind them. That's nice. But what about all the other people in the world? What are you fighting against everybody else, proving that your group is the greatest? Wow. Isn't there something there? Wouldn't the group say, I I don't care what you are, beautiful, many blessings. Maybe I'll pray with you too. You got to learn belief, guys, and you got to understand action. Most of you, and this is for the spiritual healers, most of you are so sensitive and you're looking at everybody else's price. A client comes to you and tells you, well, you're, you're very pricey. 
Who, according to you? Where's your statistics? Where is it? You don't need to tell the client that. That's something that you need to breathe in. So there's a victim someplace. A lot of people are running around looking for this $25, $30 thing, which is nice to play games and have entertainment, and maybe there's some real people out there, but there's real things that you need to do. Why are you chasing it over $25? Anything over that's too expensive, you know, or you've been through it. I've been on this road before. Any of you spiritual healers ever did that? I've done that. That did not work for me. And then you've got to turn around and say, what would God say? Have you ever worked with me? It's your first question. You clear the table. You let them see. You have all these experiences, but working with me is different than all the times you worked with anybody else. I don't need to hear your abuse. I don't need to take it. It's not that you know you're doing it, but you got to learn your power. you got to hear. you got to be able to listen. Because most of you are fear-based. And you're only going on your first seven chakras. There's a whole lot more. A whole lot more. All different breath work. All different things. Whether you believe it or not, your finger goes here. You press in this spot, that spot. 365 days, 365 acupressure points. What's going on there? What's going on? Truly, you can't judge yourself for the things you feel and also the things that you perceive because that is just a program. So how do you really go about life in a neutral way where you are that beacon for yourself where you do inspire yourself, you inspire others, and other people blossom and bloom because of the words? But... You have to understand, really, no matter who you are, what industry you're in, what business, the spiritual practice applies, no matter what it is. You have to have the routine and also the self-stillness, the breath and understanding, and then sin, getting rid of the shame and the guilt on the heart. Where does it stem from, and how do you live in the moment beyond anxiety and depression and different illnesses that do accumulate throughout the life. You have to take care of yourself now in this moment, every single thing. Your possibilities are totally endless as they should be. Realizing this in the moment, it doesn't matter what you're trying to achieve. Sometimes you do have to spend money, and most of the time you do. And it's a good thing. It's a frequency. It's a give and a what am I going to do with when I ask for the money to receive it. Some people are born into it. Some people grab onto it and hold onto it. Some people just have it always flowing because they understand the divine law. So who are you truly? Understanding extreme gratitude. You're here. You're living. It was said and it will continue to be said. And that's how the vibration shifts. So limit the influences that really don't make you feel good in your life, whether it's virtually or it's in the person. You have to make the decisions in your life and take that action. And at the end of the day, you really have to take that step. You do. Every single person. Life is so precious. So most of you are going through this thing called finances, and let's strengthen your finances right now and the way that you look at things. So some of you, let's go from a scale that people make, I wouldn't say I've seen it here, 8,000 some people make a year all the way and up, let's say, to infinity. But we'll start off at eight. 
Well, that's the salary. If that person is saying that that's all they can do, then that's all they're going to be. doesn't matter what religion, what method, anything else is that. So now let's strengthen yourself in that. Just say, I strengthen myself. I, I strengthen, I strengthen, I strengthen myself. It, it doesn't matter. You don't even have to move it to this, that, that. Just I strengthen myself within a belief that I strengthen. Now you're a little clearer. One, two, three, I strengthen, I am strengthened, I am this, I am that. I am strengthened. Strengthen, strengthen, say it with your power, strengthen, strengthen, where it goes into the earth from your feet, and then all the infinite possibilities, you got to bring that back into the zero space within you. So strengthen to zero and affirm. And when you affirm, you just express to the core of your being, I strengthen to it, I strengthen to it, I strengthen myself. Whatever you need to strengthen, I strengthen my heart. And do you strengthen? Now, let's, let's give you another energy boost, okay? So you're wanting this. Where did you see it at first? And who has it that you're trying to look at that you're better? So let's take a scenario, let's strengthen inside the scenario. You're renting a place, but you're upset with the person that's next door that owns the house, and you're arguing with your mate, and you're, you're just miserable. You're confused. What's the real reason? What's the real reason? Beyond. And what... Don't you know about that next door neighbor just because they're smiling at you, just because they're going in this car, they have that. They can have a lot of debt. So most of you are looking energetically at a lot of other people, and this one, so-and-so. You, you really got to get realistic, okay? Do any of you live in Bel Air right now? Some of you might. But you got a girl that goes to college. She's a waitress, but she's walking around with a $9,000 purse. How'd she get it? Why'd she get it? And what's the real reason? So when you look at things, realistically, if someone had money and someone was looking at that, okay, college girl works as a waitress, but she got a $9,000 purse. Let me take another little look. Okay, I got this. I got. Okay, so maybe the girl likes to pretty herself, and that's okay. But if... How are you affording this $9,000 purse? And was it a little not realistic for you to get it at that time? And could you have bettered yourself in another way? I will not look or judge. First, you've got to follow that law. Life teaches. And your life has something beautiful to show you. So you've got to clear the fear that you've heard from it's mostly from parents or people that raised you, friends that attach. So let's just strengthen the spine and any type of energy seeping. So just strengthen the spine and just say, I strengthen the spine. I strengthen my spine. And know that there's nothing for you to do at this point. For the ones that stayed, you wouldn't believe this gift. This, the reason why we're doing this is because we're so proud of all our masters. We thank and, everyone. And we thank everyone, and we're giving back. Uh, we're taking time because the masters are now moving up, and 
they're all going to be working all over the world right now, and it's up to them. And, and we're all there with each other. So we're giving back. And special th- thanks to Master Shane, to Tammy, to Shawnee, uh, to Moni, to everybody that has been this part of call. We could have picked a lot of people. Could have picked a lot of people, called on a lot of people when you call in. We just stuck to our, who, who came from the beginning, but never let anybody go. And I see some amazing stuff. I see couples that they come to us and you would swear that anybody else would, they go to counseling, they go to anything, they, everybody would tell them, leave each other. It's the wrong move. You don't tell anybody that. You got to see how they're doing. How do you life coach? That's what we do. Everybody's different. We saw a couple from not having nothing, staying in the hotels, moved into an apartment, and now moving into another apartment. Bought one car, bought another car, now got jobs. Before they had nothing, they came to this call. That's it. And now that student, that's the student of the universe, got a book coming out. Got a book coming out. How does that happen with us? Because it's about us. Our system has more authors than you can imagine. It's about you. It's about yoga, and this is the yoga right now. We're all connecting on just a breath. So there's been people that have been um, women and men also in abusive relationships, found liberation and strength. Many people have found new love, and it's the love with inside of yourself. That's a journey for every day. So really, it's, it's amazing. Life is what you make it. So you really got to keep moving forward and understand that, there is something more. But you don't need to want more. It just comes to you. So once in a while, we're going to do something special. And you're going to see the difference. You're going to record it to yourself, maybe... You can send an email saying how this helped you, how you heard about it. Uh, It doesn't matter what religion you are, who you are. If you try to figure it out, it's very hard to figure it out. Even though you think you do, it's a study. And the masters will tell you that uh, even though you reach mastery, you're always learning. There's always a new part of something coming in that is enhanced. And inside our system, it's a system without being a system. That everybody can join. And you start off like everybody else starts off. But you never end. Your job is to continue to just grow. Some of you will come, some of you will go, but many blessings to everybody that we have ever seen. Even the ones that have argumented, many blessings. We love you. We thank you. We forgive you. We even say I'm sorry. Because I'm breathing. And I got life. I'm going to use it. 
I'm going to use it to my fullest to live. Learn life. Get ready to live. 